Hey data junkies, welcome back again. We are continuing our talks on how to use categorical variables inside a simple linear regression. In the previous video, it was sort of a fundamental intro to how to use categorical variables, and we primarily focused on those that had the five or more categories and how they would work, because we can kind of use them like we would with uh, numerical variables. But in this particular video group, we're going to focus on how we can use binary uh, variables in our regression models. Now, with binaries, we can also call them dichotomous, having only two groups. We can also call them what I call an indicator variable. Now, those that are naturally dichotomous, they're ready to go. Think of it as things that are saying true, false, yes, no, up, down. We can go ahead and put them directly into the regression, and depending how they're coded, it might be a little odd to try and do their interpretations. When we're dealing with this, we're talking about a one unit change uh, in their x, but then we'd also have to look at how we could mean when x is 0. So then let's go ahead and use a brief example to illustrate what I'm talking about. In this case, I'm looking to see how does one's gender affect their socioeconomic index. So in gender, I'm using data from the General Social Survey, and we it's coded so that one are males and two are females, and there's about 1,300 men, about 1,600 women, about 45% men, 56% women, and no missing values. I had to do a slight fix on the socioeconomic status variables, so now I've got that ready to go, and it goes between 9 and 93 rounded, with an average of about 46, 47. So let's go ahead and do a brief regression on this and see how it looks. So I have the intercepts at uh, 50 rounded and about negative 2.45. We have to keep in mind that one was coded as male, two was coded as female when we write these out. So if I was to write out a regression equation, I would say I'm, I'm building out a y hat, my, that's my predicted value here. My coefficient was 50 and it's minus 2.45 times sex. So in order to figure out what my predicted value are, this is where I'm going to substitute in the coded value for those genders. So when I code it in as one for sex, I'm predicting from men, and I do the math, that comes out to an SEI score of about 47.85. When I want to do the prediction for women, I substitute in for x a value of 2, because women were coded as 2. I do the math out, and I get a predicted SEI of 45.4. So women, on average, tend to have a lower SEI than men, and that difference is about 2.45 points. Right? That is actually the coefficients amount will be the difference between them. So when you're interpreting these binaries, you're either in one group or you're in the other group. And the higher group is going to be the one that gets the uh, coefficients value more so applied to it. It'll be a little bit more clear if I was to explain how this works if we have a 0-1 dichotomy. Right? So a benefit of a 0-1 as opposed to being a 1-2 is that when we do the math, the 0 cancels out the regression coefficient in the equation. And it, it, it's optional, you don't have to do this, but when you're doing your little calculations, especially just looking at things, it becomes much faster for your estimates. It makes life nicer. So I'm just going to do a quick tell you on how I'm doing my recoding. I'm digging into the car library to get the recode function. And I'm just doing a quick changeover on gender uh, f to make it from 1 and 2 to 0 and 1. And when I do my uh, bivariate table afterwards, always check your recoded values when you can. So men coded to 0, women coded to 1. So I still preserved that differentiation where men were 1, women were 2, so men was a lower rank, uh, low level ranking. And here, men are 0, women are 1, so they maintain that men are in the lower ranking relative to women. I'm going to repeat the exact same uh, regression here, but I'm using it with 0 and 1 as they change. Now, the uh, intercept value change. The intercept was around 50 and is now 47.8, but the coefficient change has not changed for sex. It's still negative 2.45 and the same statistical significance, etc. So our predicted model equation changes. It's now y hat equals 47.8 minus 2.45 times sex. And when I do the prediction out and I write it out, men are zero, so that's just going to cancel the coefficient. So men have an average 47.8, and women just has the value of 1 applied, 2 times 1 to negative 2.45 is itself, and do the math out, it comes out to 47.35. So we are getting approximately the same SEI scores that we did before. The quick math is faster. The coefficients change relationship is the same. But it's just a real quick way of saying you're in one group, 
the group that has a higher value code takes takes that coefficients change. So women are always going to be two about two and a half points less on SCI than men at the average in this particular data group here. Now I said before that the zero ones are indicator variables and it helps to think of them like a light switch. You think of it at zero is off, one is on. And when it's coded at zero, zero means that you have the zero group. Sometimes it's a group of less interest. If, you have, if it's sort of a multiple group, we're going to see how that works in a moment here. And one is that group of internet, that flag group. When the flag group is coded to one, then it gets the coefficient value kicking in, where zero, it does not. So just think of it as an up and down light switch. Are you a zero or a one? And how that's affecting your co uh, having the coefficient change applied to that one group. Now let's talk a little bit about dummy IVs. Dummy IVs are a way to capture a wider range of predicted categories. And this, we're going to expand this topic when we get more into multiple regression heavily, but I'm going to give you a slight intro to it here on how we can use other types of variables that are not naturally dichotomous inside your simple regression. Now any ordinal variable with less than five categories and all nominal variables, we do what are called dummy code. Dummy code means we can create a series of 0, 1 dichotomous variables up to k minus 1, well we can make up to k, where k is the number of groups, and generally in our regressions we make k minus 1. We'll again come back to the y on that when we get to multiple regression. But essentially what we're doing is we are going to go ahead and collapse in some of our groups together. So instead of doing dummy codes where I can have a variable with let's say three groups, instead of making three different zero and dummies, because in simple regression I can only have one independent variable, I'm going to collapse some groups into zero and have an indicated group of interest in the value code of one. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at religion here inside the general social survey. The relig16 variable has 13 different religions inside of it here. And so we have them ranging anywhere from Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, all the way out to interdenom non-denominational. And I can use the level assignments on those, those 1 to 13, to help me recode into different indicator dummies. So in this case, I'm going to take just a few of them uh, to show you how I could do this. And we're going to look at a few uh, over time. So what I'm going to do is take that one group, religious group of interest, and make that the code value 1. And all other religions, I'm going to make code value 0. Think of that as the light switch. The 0 is all other religions. And then when it trips to the 1, it's now active for the religious group of interest. And we'll get the coefficient value applied to it. So in the top one, if I was to look at Catholics, I'm calling it a new variable. I'm just calling it rel.catholic. I'm using the recode function again. I'm turning relig16 into a number value so I can draw upon its number level for codes. If you wanted to recode it using the text labels with like an if else or something, or in recode function as well, you're more than welcome to, but using the numbers will be so much faster. And so then I'm saying if we have a, a zero, I'm sorry, the code value one, it becomes zero. 2 was the code value for Christian, so that becomes 1. 3 to 13 becomes 0, and so on with, with our changes. Uh, then we have it for Jew, Nun, Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism, correspondingly. The, when I hit the level code for that particular religion, I code it as 1. All other values become 0. And it's always good, as I said, to double check your recodes. On the screen at the moment, I'm just showing you one particular recoding check. We're checking Buddhism compared to all other religions. It's now 0, 1. So up at the top, if I look at the 1 column for there, I should only have counts in the Buddhism religion. All of the others should be coded onto the 0, as they are. Once I have those, I can go ahead and put these into some regression tests here. So what I'm regressing is each religion, one, each religious dummy, one at a time, onto SEI. So first up, let's go ahead and look and see how do Jews compare to all other religions on socioeconomic index when alpha is 0.05. So the model and variable are highly statistically significant, and I have a coefficient intercept of about 14.4. What this means is that having Jew Judaism as your religious identity corresponds with an increase of 14.4 on the socioeconomic index compared to all other religious groups. Did you get that? Let me say that one more time for you. Identifying as Jewish corresponds to an increase of 14.4 on the socioeconomic index compared to all other religious groups, on average, if I didn't say average before. And what we're then saying that intercept is if you are not identifying as Jewish, the combined amount of SCI from all other religious groups 
means that you would have an average SEI of about 46, 46.3, okay? And being Jewish I de explains a very small amount of R squared. Uh, being Jewish itself does not do very much to explain your socioeconomic index. It's about 0 0.008, very small amount. So let's go ahead and look at one with Muslims, those that identify with the faith of Islam. So uh, in this case, our p-value is not below 0 0.05. It's 0 0.442 for both the model and the uh, independent variable by design. So because we were above our p-value, this is not a statistically significant relationship. We would not be able to generalize this finding to the broader population. But I'm going to go ahead and interpret this effect anyways to see if there was a meaningful difference, and I could talk about it relative to the sample, not to the population. So the coefficient was uh, even number four. So it says identifying as a Muslim corresponds to an average four-point increase in the SEI compared to all other religious groups. Uh, and all other religious groups would have an average of 46 and a half on the SEI. Uh, again, I said this is not statistically significant, and the multiple R squared is uh, incredibly small, so I'm not even going to bother reading it at the moment. But that's how we would go ahead and interpret this. Again, noting it's not generalizable to the population. So let's go ahead and look at how Hindus fare. Hindus have an extremely small p-value, so this would be generalizable to the population. It has an estimate coefficient for being Hindu as uh, a rounded 29. So identifying with the Hindu religion or Hinduism uh, corresponds to an average 29-point increase on the socioeconomic index compared to all other religious groups, which again have an average SEI of about 46. You may notice that the average y-intercept here for all other religious groups is about the same because either you have one group that is dominating them and, and its average amount is coming through, or it just happens to be the averaged effect of all of them coming in and they're, they're balanced out. Uh, we'd have to go into deeper looks to find out why. But what we're saying here is that Hindus have an average increase of about 29 points, and it's highly statistically significant. Uh, again, the R-square, though, is very small. So it looks like religion's not being a very good predictor of SEI, but it does have some meaningful impact on SEI when we do take it into account. So let's go ahead and look at no religion. If you had identified with no particular religious identity, uh, we were not statistically significant. Our p-value is 0.651, which is far above our alpha, so we can't generalize this finding to the population. But if I'm going to go ahead and interpret the results for you anyways, we have the coefficient for no religion at 0.7 rounded. So identifying with no religious identity corresponds to an average increase in SCI of 0.7, which is a very small amount. It's not even a one-point difference on the SCI scale. And so it's a small, meaning, not very meaningful result, uh, and it's not statistically significant as well. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to give you a brief snapshot here as we close out. Uh, what it looks like if you were to put these on to multiple regression. So this is where we're just going to kind of brain dump in a whole bunch of religions all together. I leave one of them out. I'll explain why when we get to multiple regression. And just kind of like you kind of see that each one's going to get a coefficient, each one's going to get a p-value, and we can see how these tease out from each other. But we'll get into that uh, b sooner rather than later. We're almost there. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up our talk on the binary DVs, and I'll see you all in the next video.